Welcome to Blue Marble Geographics Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry, and today I'm joined by my colleague, David McKittrick, the Outreach and Training Manager here at Blue Marble Geographics. Today, David will be showing us how to calculate the volume of a reservoir. All right, David, take it away. Thank you, Rachel. As Rachel mentioned, I'm going to be going through a little bit of an exercise to calculate some volume, um, generating uh, an outline of a reservoir and then ultimately calculating the capacity of that re reservoir. In order to do this, we're going to be using a number of different tools in Global Mapper. We're going to be bringing in the terrain painting tool. We're going to be generating a contour or some contours and ultimately converting that into a polygon for the volume calculation process. So we're going to begin very quickly by bringing up the terrain painting tool. It's a relatively new addition to the Global Mapper toolkit. Um, this allows you to modify the terrain. Now, what I'm going to do in this very simple example is I'm going to create a simulated dam. Uh, you can see on my screen I've got some terrain data and what I want to do is create a dam that would effectively create a reservoir. I've got two little points on the map. I'm going to join those um, to create my dam. Now I've d um, chosen the uh, the tool. I've opened the tool terrain painting options. I'm going to choose the option to set a terrain height. This will allow me to establish a specific height at the top of my dam. Um, I can also establish a width of that dam. I want to bring that down a little bit from where it is right now, which is 10 grid cells. I want to make it a, a five meter wide dam, and it's going to be uh, 16 meters. Uh, in elevation, that is the top of the, the dam. I could also choose to lower or raise the height, depending on which would be more appropriate. Um, uh, raising the height would keep the relative shape of the land. Now, that would not be relevant for creating my dam, but that would be another option when using this tool. Final setting here is feathering. I can feather the dam so it, it uh, integrates in a more slanted way into the surrounding terrain. Now, with those settings established, I simply use my cursor. I move my cursor over the terrain, as you can see, and it will draw the terrain for me. You can see that now from the top-down view. We're looking at, at that dam. I'm going to turn off my guideline points. Um, bring it up again. I'll turn those off, and you can see uh, that dam now created. I can pop up a 3D view. Uh, very quickly here, I'm going to take a look at the three-dimensional characteristics of my dam. Now, again, my objective is to, to create a reservoir. For that, I'm going to use my contouring tool. Now, in this case, uh, instead of creating contours of a, uh, uh, based on an interval, I'm going to create contours at a specific height. Now, because my dam is uh, 16 meters in elevation, my contour that I'm interested in is going to be 15 meters. And you can see I can establish that uh, as a specific contour, assuming this box right next to my contour interval is checked, where I'm only creating a contour at that interval. Um, this should not take long. I'll just click OK and it creates my contour lines. You're seeing those, I hope, on the screen. Now, this contour is a line. Um, I want to convert that line into a polygon. Now, this is going to give me a way to determine my, my capacity. So with the, the line selected, I'm then going to go to the tool, one of the tools in my digitizer toolbar, um, where I can create an area feature from this line. A um, few options here, I'm going to leave them in their default state to determine how that line will be connected, if, then, if there's a gap, how much threshold will we allow, etc. Um, we can leave the defaults and click OK. And then I'm given the option to enter some of the uh, parameters for the target feature that I'm generating. Now, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it Reservoir. And I will um, apply a different color, maybe choose a different feature type to apply a color. This is going to be a body of water, so we'll make a, a lake. Now, this will make it appear, as you can see in the preview on the right side of the dialog box, as a blue polygon. Um, with Again, with those settings applied, we'll click OK, and it shouldn't take long. You can now see it's in its selected state, but if I deselect it, you can see... Uh, that reservoir has been created. That's now polygon, indicating the extent of the water body that would be created based on the dam that I just uh, uh, created in the terrain. Final step and ultimate objective of this workflow is to determine how much water will actually be there. This is a very simple procedure. We use the digitizer to select the polygon um, and we can right click we can go to our analysis measurement, and we have an option here for calculating the volume of a pile. Now, taken literally, this is typically going to be used for 
uh, determining how much uh, material is in a pile. Now, because we're dealing with a body of water, the numbers that we're going to see when the report is generated are inverse. We're going to see negative numbers here. And the takeaway, you can see a little report on the screen right now, the takeaway is that my fill volume is just over 85,000 cubic meters of water. So a couple of steps involved in that workflow, modifying our terrain to create the dam, generating the outline of the corresponding body of water, and then ultimately using using that as the basis for determining how much capacity is in my reservoir. David, thank you so much for talking to us about this workflow. It was very informative. For more information on Global Mapper version 23 or Global Mapper Pro, please visit our website at bloomarblegeo.com today. And as always, thank you for joining us for Ask the Experts, and be sure to stay tuned for our next episode.